Well, if you got a dollar, just lays it down. You know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget fine. You can... Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel. Doing a slightly different type of video today because I was traveling over the last couple of weeks uh, for business, also on a, a mini vacation, and started sourcing items primarily for myself. Uh, I did pick a few things up to resale, but for the most part, I, this was all about me. And one of the things that I found, I wanted to do a short video on to showcase because I love learning things. This is something I had not come across and I thought it was kind of cool. What I found were these, what I'm going to assume are door plates. That's what they look like. Um, they have holes on both sides that have a place that you'd be able to attach them. They are flat on the back, glazed on the front. And based on the size, it seems like they would go on to maybe a swinging door of some type. When I picked them up, they picked them up at an estate sale in Western New York. The person did not know where they came from. They said they found them in a drawer. To their knowledge, they had not been used. They have been used in the past because there's paint on the edges of these. Um, but they actually didn't know what they were for either. So I picked them up because I actually knew what we were in part of a re, um, remodeling project that actually needed push plates. We were looking at brass ones. So I thought these were kind of a fun addition. But the reason I'm showing them now is because, and I did a little bit of this uh, research while I was there at the estate sale, is what I found on the back. I'm going to switch my camera so we can look at these uh, more closely. So as you can see, I have a set of four of these. They're all identical. They're all the same size. They're all roughly the same uh, condition. You can see some of them. Some of them have, you know, some chips coming out of the side. Um, you can see a little bit of the paint that I was talking about, kind of a sage green paint that uh, from when these were on a wall or door uh, that was painted. But what makes them interesting is this mark right here. So this is called a diamond mark. And from doing a little bit of research, it appears they were a British thing. They were done, it be, used between the period of 1842 and 1883. And they're basically the equivalent or that era's a version of a U.S. patent office. So the RD in the middle, uh, the whole thing is referred to as a diamond mark, but the RD in the middle stands for registered. So it's kind of like a registered trademark. And the information that's in here it's why one of the things i love about porcelain and pottery particularly european it's all marked so clearly you can find everything you could possibly want to know about it simply by looking at the information on the back so right off the bat starting at the top of the uh, classification uh, the top of the diamond is the classification of what this is used of what class is the material because this is a type of pottery or clay the class in this case is IV, Roman numeral four, which stands for the, um, which stands for clay. Uh, that it's basically, it's registering what class material. So the different, where this might've been, again, because for a patent, a design patent, where you actually would find it, um, the different types of classification, it would match whatever material it was put on, whether it was metal, paper, you know, anything, anything like that. Okay, so then working around the diamond, the number underneath the Roman numeral four, the seven, that simply means it was the seventh day of the month uh, that it was registered. The month is indicated at the bottom so that W, there's a table that you have to reference and the W uh, in this case stands for March. On the right-hand side, it's another code. So that's an X, not a Roman numeral 10, just an X. And that also refers to a chart, and that chart is for representing 1868. And there are some exceptions, uh, exceptions to it. And the number on the left, the 11, uh, it's just a weird thing that it references the total number of items that were registered that day. So on March 7th, 1868, this item was one of 11 items registered that day in the classification of clay number four. So you know that this is 1868. Now, just like a patent mark, 
something that's patented in 1868 does not mean it was manufactured in 1868. However, just like in a patent, after around 10 years, maybe 20 depending, the pattern, the registration would no longer be promoted because it, there would be new patents that are overriding it, there'd be new designs. So you know that this design was registered in 1868, so you're dealing with a 19th century design. So like I said, this was gonna be a short video. Uh, it, hopefully you found it somewhat interesting. The, the fact that you can do that type of research and that type of analysis and find out exactly when something was designed, I just find fascinating. It doesn't make it valuable. I mean, you, again, these are not perfect condition. You know, they've been used. You can see, you know, I think you saw the price tag on them. I, they were listed for $1.50 a piece. I actually paid less than that because I was on the second day of the sale. So I think I got like 30 or 40% off on that. So again, they're not super valuable pieces, but it's just great when you can identify the specifics of the history, know that something that has a relatively simple design was actually designed back in the 19th century and uh, was a true Victorian. So people, you banter the Victorian term around all the time. True Victorian, and if you add this to your home, you've got authentic Victorian design in your home. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you uh, like what you're seeing on my channel, I'm hoping to be promoting more videos. Go ahead and subscribe, but uh, even if you don't, appreciate you giving me your time and putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. That sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way